which home team is most likely to lose in the wild card? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, when you look at the, the opponent that they're going up against, the San Francisco 49ers, for me, it's the level of physicality that the 49ers bring to the table. You know, we talk about, we talk so much about with the Dallas Cowboys, the speed that they have, particularly on the defense. You know, obviously, Randy Gregory, Demarcus Lawrence, and Michael Parsons. Well, guess what neutralizes speed? Power, the running attack. The, the rushing attack that Kyle Shanahan has these guys running. They know how Kyle Shanahan is a master at exploiting weaknesses in your defense, matchups in your defense. And when you look at their offensive line, they got one of the best groups up in the National Football League. Debo Samuel, to me, is one of the most remarkable players in the National Football League. He had a historic year. He's a move. I call him an offensive weapon. Yes, he's a wide receiver, but he's really an offensive weapon. The way they deploy him offensively, whether it be in the backfield at the running back position, out wide at the wide receiver, this dude is a running back in a wide receiver's body because he wants all the smoke, whether it's running the ball or catching the ball at the wide receiver position. I think that's going to be very hard for the Dallas Cowboys to match up physically. And then on the other side of the ball, what the, what the San Francisco 49ers bring on the defensive line. You're talking about Eric Armstead, Nick Bosa. Those guys are relentless coming at you. And what we see from the Dallas Cowboys, the second half of the season, there's one word for it, inconsistent. They've been inconsistent yeah. across the board, whether it's the offensive line, Dak Prescott, the rushing, the rushing attack, passing game, they've been inconsistent. Yes, their defense has been playing good all year long. But I think in order to beat the Dallas, I mean, in order to beat the San Francisco 49ers, they're going to have to be something that they haven't been throughout the second half of the season, and that's be consistent for three hours plus to, be, to uh, beat this physicality that the San Francisco 49ers are going to bring to Jerry's world. Let me ask you this question. If you could handpick the team you didn't want to see in the first round of the playoffs, would it have been the 49ers, Michael? Oh, oh I, 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 absolutely. <laughs> Soon as when we got there, I said, "Oh God, that's the I don't not the Forty Niners, man, not the Forty Niners." And, and you know, I got friends here, and they were texting me uh, that I go on there with here. And they were texting me, "Man, it's great, we got the Forty Niners over." I said, "The worst draw for us, the worst draw, the worst draw. We want I wanted San Fran to go knock off Green Bay or the Rams before they came through here." Before we saw them, you know what I mean? That, that is their preference is to have a 50-yard run as opposed to Jimmy G pushing the ball downfield 50 yards. San Francisco 49ers offense had the second most explosive plays in all of football this year, run and passes. Mm -hmm. You know what defense has given up the most in the playoffs? The Dallas Cowboys. Yep. This is a strength versus a weakness thing. I think Kyle Shanahan's strength as a play caller is who's your best player, who's your worst player. I'm going to find your best player, and I'm going to make sure I get him as far away from the football as I can. Micah Parsons, you guys talked about the motions, the multiple motions pre-snap. He's going to motion them out. I think there's going to be plays where Kyle actually doesn't block Micah Parsons mm -hmm. and puts him in a read type of situation with some of their zone reading RPOs. So that's their best player. Who's your worst player? I think Kyle Shannon is going to cut on the tape and say, we can get after Anthony Brown in our pass game. How many different ways can I get our guy, maybe not our best player, but the guy that I think can win on a consistent um, every now and then in life, stars align. Mm. Uh, and unfortunately for the Cowboys, the stars that are aligning aren't great ones. The Niners pose a huge threat to any and everybody. And this has yes. nothing to do with Dallas, my like for them or disdain for them. December 22nd, I went out on a limb and I said these words. If y'all remember, December 22nd, let's roll it. Let's do it. Oh, you're cute. Look at this. San Francisco 49ers will win their first playoff game. Okay. Point blank okay. period. Okay. I just, okay. I don't care where they wind up, who they play against, how they play there. They will win their first playoff mm. game. I have more confidence in this mm. Niners team than every other NFC team. And mm. I know the Packers are going to get a bye. So <laughs> December okay. 22nd, I said the San Francisco 49ers will win their first playoff game. I don't care who they play against. I don't care where they play. The San Francisco 49ers do something that no other NFC team does, and that is play incredibly physically.
Mm. Every NFC team, whether it be the Packers, a little bit of finesse. Y'all know what Aaron Rodgers does so wonderfully. The Buccaneers, a lot of bit of finesse. Tom Brady lead the league in passing yards. The Arizona Cardinals, ain't nothing but finesse. The uh, Los Angeles Rams, finesse, finesse, finesse. But the Niners, smack smack you in the mouth they say i don't care to be pretty we gonna be gritty we gonna be grungy we just gonna sit there and punch you in the face now my philadelphia eagles they set a franchise record in rushing yards some people will say they are grimy as well there's a difference in running attacks america there's a quarterback run game which is still efficient as it pertains to acquiring yards then there's just a true traditional run game which is this ain't gonna be outsmarting you tricking you we're gonna line up and punch you in the face that's what the Niners do. It's a huge threat to the Cowboys sell because the Cowboys do not do much of anything bad at all. Okay, there you as go. As a team, the Cowboys don't do much of anything bad. But the Cowboys do one thing mediocre, <clears throat> stopping the run. Hmm. You might say, well, Acho, the Cowboys are 16th in stopping the run. That's middle of the pack. Look closer, America. 23rd in yards per attempt. Hmm. So while the Cowboys are middle of the pack in overall yardage allowed, they're 23rd in how many yards do we give up per rush? The Niners are 29th in passing attempts, meaning the Niners ain't even going to try to pass the ball. <laughs> right, right. The Niners are fifth in rushing attempts, meaning all the Niners want to do is run the ball. Cowboys, the only thing you do bad is stop the run. Niners, the only thing we want to do is run the ball. Niners, fifth in rushing touchdowns. Niners, seventh in rushing yards. Cowboys, 16th in rushing yards allowed. Cowboys, 23rd in yards per attempt. It's a bad combination, big dog. Niners are a hungry, tough, gritty football team. And the Cowboys are a great football team. But they a pretty football <clears throat> team. Mm. Pretty and gritty don't always mix. Mm. Strong take. That's how we come back together. And I'm glad you went and actually went into the archives for December 22nd, because that feels like the last time I seen <laughs> December 22nd. And it's been a long time. I just think they present a brand of football uh, where you talk about the playoffs that you want to play. You want to control the line of scrimmage. They can do both of those things with their offensive line. You look at Trent Williams, a guy who's been doing it for a long time. One right? of the best. He's been doing it for a very, very long time. And right. I also, I'll, I'll, I'll go to their center, Alex Mack, a guy who was in Atlanta with Kyle Shanahan. So you just have that continuity there, and I think they're peaking at the right time to make noise. And, yes, I'm going to say it with my chest. I think they're the best team in the NFC West right now. Wow. That's, all, that's saying a lot, actually. Best team in the NFC West. To me, that's the, that is the hard out in the playoffs, the tough out, the Niners. I don't think people are looking forward to playing them. Are they actually the most dangerous team in the, in the NFC West right now, Key? In the NFC West? Okay, in the NFC? You want to expand uh, it to the NFC? I would probably say that they are right there because what they like to do is portable. They like to run the football. They got a big <laughs> offensive line. They're strong. The defense is solid. I'm afraid of the back end of the secondary for them. But other than that, I think that they got Bosa coming off the edge and Ormstead in the middle clogging things up. You got a great defense of mine right there running the football. As long as Jimmy G doesn't turn the ball over to the other team, you got an opportunity and a chance. The difference is that the problem is that they're not going to face the NFC West team in their opening playoff wild card. They're going to see the Dallas Cowboys, so it's a little bit different. I will tip my tip my hat to Kyle Shanahan, though. The way they use Debo Samuel, man, it, it, it's been beyond impressive, right? You talk about he's become a Swiss Army Knight. He's a running, running game, bad pass receiver game. guy, yeah. Like he even mixed it in with the TD pass this week. So I, I just the, the level that they're playing at right now, we always talk about this, guys. Hitting the right stride going into the playoffs, I think, speaks volumes about carrying that momentum. And I think the 49ers are in that type of, type of position. The other what thing, happens if Jimmy G goes to the Super Bowl? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, Jimmy G, here he, he is. What if he takes uh, them to the Super Bowl? What would they – I wonder how they would feel. But why, why couldn't he? He's done it before. No, no, it's not that he can't. can't. It's just that you're at the seventh seed, you're on the road for the entire rest of the way. It's hard to do. There's not very many teams no that doubt. have done that. But if he did somehow do it, and Trey Lance is sitting there, and you trade all the way up to get Trey Lance to do it, like, what do you do? Here's what's crazy. <laughs> like, what happens? I think I think P Jimmy G is so slept on because, uh, the, you know, the strongest arm, all those kind of things. They could win the Super Bowl, and Jimmy G could play, as you say, key, solid and sound football on the way to winning a Super Bowl. They'd still move on from Jimmy G. That's the feeling I get. I don't know if they would, though. 
I don't know if they would. And the defending champion, Bucks, Niners, Cowboys, and Jerry World Monday night. It's Cardinals, Rams at SoFi. And the reason the NFC side looks the way it does has a lot to do with San Francisco. They came back from that 17-point deficit to the Rams on Sunday. End of regulation. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy Garops dropped or drove downfield. Didn't drop anything. He hit Juwan Jennings, 14-yard touchdown to force overtime. Amber Thomas, a rookie, I do believe, right? Yeah, out of Michigan. Rookie sealing the win by picking off Matthew Stafford and sending San Francisco to the playoffs. And that really ripple affected the entire NFC side of things. So does Jimmy Garoppolo's Week 18 performance impact the Niners' chances in the playoffs? Are you looking at it any different? Yeah, looking at them completely different. They've got a dog at quarterback. And going into this game, it was... Garoppolo's always good when he's healthy and he's available, but he's rarely healthy and available. So it's like, I don't know what to make of this guy. Well, he wasn't healthy. He was playing with an avulsion fracture in oh. his hand. And he played anyway, and he took every snap. And when they needed him most, Jimmy Garoppolo said, let's go. The, the final drive... The Rams take this lead 24-17. It's less than two minutes to go, and it, this is this is the stuff that legends are made of. Like, this was an a, incredible drive downfield where the Rams are gassed, and 49ers find a way, and Jimmy was just on fire through the perfect passes time and time again, got the ball to the line of scrimmage, rushed to the line, and it's like, oh, my God, the Niners have a competent quarterback, and he's been there, and he's won in New Orleans in a big uh, game a couple of years ago, and he's won the NFC Championship game against Aaron Rodgers, and he's beaten Kirk Cousins in a playoff game, and he just beat Matthew Stafford in what was essentially a playoff game for them in the, on the road in their building after being down 17 to nothing. I think it extends beyond this playoff. Like, I'm looking at the 49ers going into Dallas, and I'm like, yeah, I, I think they can win that game. I think they can win that game because of what they've got going on and because of Jimmy. But then I look at the offseason, and no point in those two starts did I look at Trey Lance and be like, okay, Let's go. Let's start the Trey Lance era. I still think he might be a year away. Mm -hmm. And if Jimmy wins this game, and who wow. knows, wins the next game, and then got, if he wins another two games, you're going to tell Jimmy Garoppolo that, hey, you know, we traded a couple draft picks, and mm -hmm. I, we got to go with this guy. Like, I don't think it's a slam dunk that Jimmy's days are done in San Francisco. I wonder how he threw against the Rams, which I have to relive this again after yesterday and watching it on Sunday. But it's okay. Their running game is better. That it's going to be that has been right they can run the ball with elijah mitchell or debo samuel or uh wilson or whoever they want and now you have the play action pass which now hurts you right because he's been accurate he can make these plays to me it's it's, it's a no-brainer that the the better he plays the farther the niner go mm -hmm. the niners go and and kyle we were talking about the you said raheem mostert is one of the top running backs that made a, a run in the playoffs because he rushed for 200 yards in the MC Championship game, mm -hmm. and he only threw the ball eight times. That's fine. That's not the Jimmy Garoppolo we're seeing now. And I hate to, to, to praise the Niners because I have some friends that are Niners, and they're relentless, and they're annoying. But I've said this before, and I'll say it here. No one wants to play the San Francisco 49ers mm -hmm. in this playoff. No, not, not a team. If you look at what they did with the Packers, if you look at when they play these teams, like they've beaten up on everybody, and they've been in close games with all these top teams. I don't think anyone wants to play them. I'm with you. And I love Jimmy. Does he not operate that offense so well when it's clicking? Like he, that's, I don't think they ever ask him to. You I see think the he plays like is, that. Absolutely. And he makes the big throws and he has the third and nine factor where it's like, man, Jimmy, we need one throw. The fear is, well, 14 nothing Dallas, first quarter. Jimmy, uh, we can't just hand off. It, that's the fear. They're yeah. not building. When I think well, of the Niners, they get out early, they get in front of it, and they run the ball. And yeah. That's what they do. I think the Week 18 performance changed what I saw in this team a little bit because it. I think they don't need to. Look, Dan Quinn obviously has the most work cut out for him that he's had all season long. And that is coming to the side. We, we talked earlier about assistant coaches missing yep. during the season because of COVID. You have to adjust to this team you know every what, series. What we were talking it's about be vital. pre show as well. I don't need you to be wrong every play. Mm -mm. I, if I call 20 outside zones in some way and you're right on 17 of them, great. If you're wrong on three, I win. Yeah. All right, That's let's when the, get cat, some... the gashes come. Let's... The other side, I'm going to say Debo Samuels, because as great as Michael Parsons has been this year, and he's been phenomenal. Debo Samuel has had a uh, historic history. He's had over 1,300, you know, 1,300 receiving yards and over 300 rushing yards in a season. He's an offensive weapon. Like, 
Dan, I'm not a big stats guy. I don't get into sure. stats a whole lot. But I mean, like, like, listen, there's a couple things that just jump out to me as far as Debo Samuel is concerned. This is a guy that's averaging over 10 yards yards after the catch, meaning he catches the yeah. ball and then he gains another 10 First yards down, after that. Yeah. That to me is mentality. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's where you, when you talk about Debo Samuel, you're talking about a guy that's a running back in a wide receiver body. When you're able to do things like that, and then he's third in the lead when he's playing when he's rushing the ball, third in leads in yard per carry at the at, at mm. when he's lined up mm. as a running back. Yeah. So like this is a guy like you talk about eyes on Michael Parsons, and there are going to be a lot of eyes on Michael yeah. Parsons. There's going to be a lot of eyes from the Dallas D defense. Where is where where is sure. Debo Samuels? We going to we're, we need to find him. Just like you alluded to when we were talking about in the, just in the, in the last segment, decoy. Like you can do so many things yeah. with Debo yeah. Samuels that's going to unlock Wood. other people in that offense. What I, I think Debo Samuel is like our eras and our generations, like Roger Craig. You know, Rod, Roger Craig back yeah. in the day, like he he was. A guy that did everything. You want him as a pass catcher? Great. You want him as a runner? Great. It's very Marshall Falk-ish as well when it comes to like his ability to do both at such a high level. I mentioned it before. I think there's going to be opportunities when but Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, is going to go Micah Parsons. You've got Debo Samuel. I don't care where he goes. You've got Debo Samuel. They're obviously going to be in man coverage in those situations. And that's why it's going to be fascinating yeah. to watch. I think both of those are going both of those guys are going to have a tremendous impact on the football game, obviously. But if one of those guys has a more trans I use that word transcendent performance, that's the team that's going to win the football game. If Debo goes for over 150 plus yards all purpose or 200 plus all purpose yards, like the, the, the 49ers are going to win. As long as Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't have like one of those why did you or how did right, you just throw right, one of those interceptions? Right. The 49ers will win that football game. But franchise. So here's what worries me. The Cowboys look great against the NFC East. They're 6-0. and And, I mean, they bulldoze these teams. But they're 6-5 and against everybody else. And I got to tell you, this morning, when I watched the Niners, I would not – I like the Niners. I like the way they match up. I like the way they're playing, Jimmy. I think it's a tough matchup for Dallas. I, I think it's a tough matchup, too. I, I know the Cowboys are favored, you know, there at home. Uh, but – San Francisco looked really, really good, and they're a physical football team. Uh, they can run the football. They play outstanding defense. You know, their defensive line you know, can overpower you. Uh, they're an impressive football team. I, I, it'll be a great one to watch, you know, because, you know. In the NFL, Arizona, I like them. They're struggling. Uh, and yet 49ers, oh, I don't want any part of them. Did you find in your career that you could take anything from your last couple regular season games and that it, that it equated to any momentum at all in the playoffs? Yeah, I, I think momentum is important. I, and it's important as far as the confidence of your team. Uh, obviously, the 49ers coming off that win after being down 17 to nothing, you know, they're going to go into this first round of the wild card as a confident football team. So I think it helped on your confidence. Uh, the only thing that the, the variable there is if you're resting players uh, and to protect them, you yeah. know, and you don't play quite as well. So you got to you know you got to take that into account if you're not playing your best players. But if you're playing your best players and you have a game like you had, you know, with the 49ers against the Rams, you go into the playoffs confident. And Mike, I know you've been kind of, this has been something that you've been on for a minute now, is the Cowboys have to deal with this part of it. And after watching uh, just a few games, just I'm, I'm just, I just started watching San Francisco a little bit. Right. It's, I'm really like, I, I know their defense has some physicality to it. Okay. I get that. But Kittle is also a physical tight end. Like he loves contact. And Debo Samuel will truck you. And their running backs are very physical. They're physical on the offensive line. And when we look at the Cowboys, do we think of them all as Micahs? Because I think Micah is a very physical player. Right. I think Tank is a physical player. Right. I think I've seen Randy Gregory, he's speed. There's a lot of speed that comes with him. And then when he gets to the point of impact, there's some physicality that comes along with it. But he also put on some weight this year and everything. I think Jaron Curse is a physical player. I don't think Jordan Lewis is afraid to back down whenever it comes time to tackle. I think Anthony Brown likes to tackle too. But 
the these dude this is a different opponent uh i think physically from the offensive and defensive side than the cowboys have seen do you think i'm not gonna lie i have never lie i have never seen so many of the opposing team's fans at a game and I, we came from Detroit, and a lot, there are a lot of good traveling teams there, but that was wild. Like, Matthew is on a silent count, and for those of you who don't know what that is, like, he can't call, it's like a, like, when he hikes the ball, it's either a loud count where you can hear him, and that's what usually quarterbacks are on when they're at home, or a silent count. Matthew is on a silent count, Jimmy Garoppolo was not, who's the opposing quarterback. It was crazy. I mean, I again, I've never seen anything like that, but... um. It made it it made it very hard for us because I guess, you know, we weren't expecting to be on silent count.